Hi guys, it's Amber from Amber Eats Books and I'm here today to bring you my top 10 reads of 2017. Now I will go into the saying that not all these books were published in 2017. In fact, I don't even know if any of them are published in 2017. I just happened to finally read them in 2017. I do not have them in any particular order except for the last book that is going to be my favorite book of the year. So let's jump right in. The first book on my list is Saving Simon by John Katz. This is a book that actually really surprised me this year. I went into it not expecting a whole lot. I mean, I assumed we were going to get at least a cute story of how this donkey was rehabilitated from his near death state that they had found him in. What I got was so much more. I not only learned a ton about donkeys in general, I also learned about how they interact not only with themselves, but with other animals and with humans. I just found it fascinating. I learned so much while reading this. Also, it made me cry a ton. It does deal with animal abuse, so know that going into it. If that's something that triggers you, you may not want to pick it up. But for me, I can handle it. It just, it made me cry so often. Also, this really opened up an inner dialogue within myself about compassion. I want to try to incorporate that in going into 2018. This book really reminded me that sometimes you have to look at people's circumstances and other things rather than just how they're acting at that moment and to try to to have compassion for them. Now, the author of this book was trying to have compassion for the, the owner of Simon who really treated him absolutely poorly. And I don't know if I can go that far yet. I don't know if I can have compassion for someone who treats animals so bad, but it really helped me to try to seek out more ways that I could be compassionate in my own life. The next book on my list was The Heretic's Daughter by Kathleen Kent. This is the story of a family who is accused of being witches back during the time when those accusations pretty much meant death. I went into this book not really expecting a lot. I had probably owned this book for two years or so, and I just happened to pick it up for a readathon that I was doing. It fit one of the challenges very well, so I was like, okay, I'm going to give it a shot. What I got was so much more than what I thought I was going to get going into it. This story was kind of like a slow burn. You start learning about the family, the family dynamics between all of the members. You start learning about how life was back then. So it's this kind of slow build up so that by the time they're being accused of being witches, you are so like engrossed in their family that you can't help but to feel such an attachment to them and to really worry about them while they're going through their imprisonment and eventually trials for being witches. So this was just such a pleasant surprise and I'm absolutely happy that I read it this year. The next book I'd like to talk about is Fool's Errand by Robin Hobb. Now, I don't own this book yet, but I definitely plan on buying this one as well as all the other books in her Realm of the Elderling series. So I will own them at some point. It's just going to take me a while to finally collect them all. This book really stood out above the other fantasy books that I read this year. And I read some great fantasy books, but this one made me cry so much. I have never cried so much while reading a fantasy book before. So this one really just got stuck in my mind. Now I will say the beginning of this book was rather slow for me. It was kind of going back over events and things that happened between the last time we had visited this character till now. And I was kind of like, oh, is this book gonna pick up? Because Robin Hobb's books can be a bit slow for people. However, once the story really started coming together, it was fantastic and by the end like I said I was just a sobbing blubbering mess so I definitely recommend not only Fool's Aaron but all of Robin Hobb's books. The next book is Alice I Have Been by Melanie Benjamin. This is a fictionalized account of the true story of the girl who Alice in Wonderland was based on. I went into this book not really knowing a whole lot about the background of how Alice in Wonderland came to be and was kind of shocked and surprised to find out all of the information that I did reading this book. I actually had to stop reading it, go and research what really happened, and then come back to it and find out that she really followed history quite well as far as what's available and what we know. I loved her writing in this book. Not a lot of people have heard of this, and I don't think it has 
too many reviews on Goodreads as opposed to more popular books, but it is definitely one that I highly recommend and I am seeking out her other book that I know that she has published for 2018. The next top 2017 book is the only audiobook that actually made my list, and that is Born a Crime by Trevor Noah. Now, I listened to a lot of celebrity memoirs throughout 2017, but he definitely did the best job with his, his book. Not only was it funny and insightful, but it was also very wonderful to listen to him narrate his book and be able to speak all these African languages that he speaks within the book. I personally would not have been able to even come close to any of the pronunciations that he was able to do while reading a physical copy. So I was so happy to hear and be able to speak it because it just added another layer of richness to his story. His humor was just spot on in so many places. I laughed so hard while listening to it. The character of his mother, and I call her a character because she definitely is, she's this vibrant, larger than life presence in the book. The way he brought her to life in the pages was just fantastic. And I recommend this audiobook to everyone. I feel like everyone could get something out of it. The next top book of 2017 was Paper Butterflies by Lisa Heathfield. Now this book just hit me in the feels. This follows the story of June. Her new stepmother and stepsister treat her horribly. Warnings for child abuse, so if you cannot handle that, I would not pick up this book. Um, and her father is oblivious to everything that is going on. I just connected with this book so much emotionally. I cried right and left, and I just feel like this book is one that I'm going to remember for a very, very long time. The next book on my list is The Kitchen House by Kathleen Grissom. Now, I don't own this one yet, but I definitely plan on buying it in 2018. This book is set during the time of slavery. We are following multiple perspectives. We're following a small Irish girl. We're following a um, child of not only a slave owner, but a slave. And it is just one that really digs into the nitty gritty of that time period. I will definitely remember this book, not only throughout the next year, but probably throughout my lifetime because it's one that just impacted me so much. I know that there's a second book in this series and I definitely plan on picking that up during 2018. Another nonfiction book made my list and that is Smoke Kits in Your Eyes and Other Lessons from the Crematory by Caitlin Doty. Now, I went into this book thinking I would at least enjoy it, but really this book changed my perspective on death. I had always been one that was like, oh, just cremate me until I read this book and then I realized maybe I don't want that after all. As a society, we don't really consider what we want done with our bodies after death. We kind of push death off into the far, 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 far distant future when really it could be right around the corner. And this really made me sit and think about not only the practices here in America, but just really what I want done with my own body personally after I die. I know she has another book that came out at the end of 2017, and I'm so eager to pick it up. The next book on my list is A Man Called Uva by Frederick Bachman. After reading this and my grandmother asked me to tell you she's sorry, Frederick Bachman has been cemented as one of my new favorite authors. This follows Uva and he is an older man. He has lost a lot in his life and he's just kind of crabby right now. He doesn't have a lot of patience for anybody or anything. And then a new neighbor moves in and his life kind of changes. This was such a sweet story and also one that made me cry so much. I love older protagonists and this one really fit the bill as far as wonderful writing, wonderful characters. We have finally arrived at my favorite book of the year and that is Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. Now this book starts off with a death and kind of goes back and sees all of the actions that took place that have culminated in this event. I loved the writing in this book. It really just spoke to me in a way that no other book this year had. I remember starting it after a read that wasn't really the best and I was kind of like in a grumpy mood and just really didn't know what I wanted to read but I'd heard really good things about it so I was like I'll give it a try. Once I started reading it was just like I breathed the sigh of relief because the writing was just wonderful. I felt like I was wrapping myself in a warm snuggly blanket. Not only was the writing wonderful but the plot itself was masterfully crafted and I 
would read anything and everything that this author ever puts out. In fact, I have Little Fires Everywhere on my shelf and I cannot wait to get to it in 2018. So that was my top 10 list of books that I loved in 2017. Have you guys read any of these? What did you think of them? Also, what was your favorite read of 2017? Leave that down in the comments below and I hope to have many discussions with you. As always, have a great week and happy reading.